Yeah. We're ready to go. Yeah. Well, good morning and thank you for coming out to SAPOL this morning. I'm joined here today by Assistant Commissioner Noel Bamford and also representatives of the CFS and also the SES. Uh, the reason why the SES are here uh, is, of course, because SES play a vital role in helping, helping with Operation Nomad. And, of course, our CFS, uh, if there are bushfires that are, are lit, then, of course, our CFS are the first to respond. We know that people that deliberately light bushfires are absolute scumbags. They are scumbags, and if they're caught lighting bushfires, then they will be put in jail. Today we're here to talk about Operation Nomad. Operation Nomad is run each and every year by South Australia Police. It is a dedicated, focused operation and what it does uh, is it aims to deter firebugs and also monitor key people of interest. This year we have 88 persons of interest. It's not uncommon for SAPOL on high risk bushfire days uh, for these people to get a knock on the door SAPOL also have a whole range of other capabilities to make sure that they monitor these people. If you think it's a good idea to light a bushfire, you've got rocks in your head and you will be caught. So let's make sure everybody does the right thing this bushfire season. We're coming into summer this week and the bushfire danger season opens uh, for each and every fire danger district. Uh, we, know, we know that with the warmer uh, weather, uh, the chance and the risk of bushfires also increases. It's really important that SAPOL uh, continue to uh, operate this, uh, this targeted operation, Operation Nomad. Each and every year, there are hundreds of uh, incidents, if you like, that are investigated by, by SAPOL. There's no reason for any one of these people uh, to do the wrong thing. Uh, these people will be monitored by SAPOL. As I said, 88 persons of interest this year will be monitored. It's not uncommon for these people to get a knock on the door if SAPOL uh, suspect anything suspicious. Let's make sure that we all do the right thing this bushfire season. There's absolutely no reason uh, for bushfires to, to break out. Uh, this is a very targeted uh, operation, uh, and this operation will be targeting uh, those that are negligent, uh, deliberate and reckless. Let's make sure that we all get through this bushfire season unscathed. I'll now hand over to Assistant Commissioner Noel Bamford. Good morning. Tomorrow marks the official start of the fire danger season and with it Operation Nomad. Operation Nomad maintains a focus on deliberate, reckless and negligent acts that may cause a bushfire. Throughout the fire danger season, police will be deployed to areas of concern across the state with extra activity on total fire ban days. These patrols not only proactively detect uh, will not only proactively detect risky and deliberate behaviour, but they'll also monitor persons of interest and will work with the community to reduce the risk of bushfire. For a second year, SES personnel are supporting SAPOL with Operation Nomad. They're supplementing police who are already committed to South Australia's COVID-19 response. SES members will provide a highly visible presence around the Adelaide Hills, acting as the eyes and ears of police. And I'd like to thank the SES for their contrib contributing Sorry, I'd like to thank the SES for their ongoing collaborative approach to Operation Nomad. Bushfire prevention is a community effort, and while SA Police will proactively monitor and detect risky and deliberate bushfire activity, we rely on information from the public to keep our community safe. So if you see a bushfire or you see smoke, please call triple zero immediately. If you see somebody acting suspiciously, or, or see some behaviour that they, you think is likely to contribute to a bushfire, please ring, please ring South Australia Police on 131444. And if you know about somebody who's committed an offence, you can report that anonymously to Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000. So if you're thinking of lighting a fire or, causing, or using appliances during the fire danger season, the best source of information is the CFS website. The onus is on you to do the right thing. If you cause a bushfire, don't think police are going to let you off with a warning. I'll hand over to CFS. Thank you, Mr Banford. <coughs> As the Minister and uh, Mr Banford have just outlined, with the commencement of the fire danger season in remaining districts as of midnight this evening, it is a reminder to the community that fire is about to be a real and present risk across the state of South Australia. We'll only need to see a return of those hot and windy conditions around the state to see that risk really spike and for, uh, for our volunteers and uh, other firefighting personnel 
to be you know incredibly busy out there in the community. Reckless uh, behaviour by landowners is by far one of the bigger contributors to fires in South Australia and we're urging people that if they're undertaking activities, they're doing burn-offs, they're using prescribed equipment, things like that, we're urging that they, they are sensible, that they follow the rules, that they are aware that there are obviously rules that apply during the fire danger season and that they, uh, they take this risk quite seriously because we only need a moment of their inattention and we'll have a pretty bad day for South Australia. Um, that's all I have and I'll hand over to the SES. Uh, <clears throat> good morning. Uh, so SES are uh, very proud to be once again supporting SA Police with Operation Nomad. Last year SES personnel supported around a dozen Operation Nomad days through the Adelaide Hills, providing that observe and report function to police. We once again look forward to supporting SA Police with that this coming fire season, but also supporting our partner agencies in CFS and MFS with any fires that may become a problem. That's all I have, thank you. What powers does the, does the SES have over you? Can you pretty much just see and report and then hand over to say a fire? Yeah, that's correct. So uh, SES basically just provided an observe and report function. So if we were to see any um, risky behaviour or any fire starts, we would report that through the um, police function. Have you sort of got any covert sort of stuff or is it all there and you're in your plural orange? Nah, um, SES will be providing a very highly visible presence into these areas, so that's with uh, a number of marked fleet, they'll be in their orange uniforms, so if you do see them out in the community, they're providing that opportunity for you to even ask questions about what you can and can't do, but also that observe and report function. I don't know who's best placed to answer this question, sorry Mark, but um, um, uh, Terry Darling's bushfire was deliberately lit with um, the alleged arsenic still going through court. Just how catastrophic um, was that fire to that Terry died in his community? Any fire is disastrous for the local community. The Cherry Gardens blaze was obviously a significant fire that burnt through, um, causing destruction and impacting you know, lives and property throughout the hills. Any deliberate fire behaviour is, as the Minister said, unacceptable and these people will be caught. These are, these are actions that risk the lives of not only the community but also our first responders who have to go out and deal with them. Why would someone it's, it's, you know, there are so many reasons, unfortunately. It'd be difficult to speculate on the individual motivations. What's the, um, if you're like at the moment, what, what sort of season are we looking at? I mean, given that it's been quite wet, is there a heap of fuel that might dry off? Yes, yeah, certainly. Look, we've enjoyed a milder start to the bushfire season thus far, but we know that uh, the rainfall uh, that we've enjoyed is set to, uh, or is forecast to perhaps taper off now, and we'll start to see a return to typical South Australian summer conditions. That rainfall has increased the grass fuel growth in parts of South Australia, and that's obviously a risk we'll be monitoring throughout the rest of the fire danger season as that dries off. Um, those, those risk of large grass fires becomes a, a challenge that we'll be, uh, be monitoring. Has this started later this year? Does that mean it'll finish later? I mean, how can you talk to us about the timeline of this danger season? Yes, yeah, certainly. Look, we've seen a normal start across the state to the fire danger season. In preceding seasons, we've actually seen the, the fire danger season start earlier. Um, and if we look back to the 2019, 2020 fire season, we saw obviously a very early start to fires across um, the whole state. Compared to that, we are back to those normal, more traditional start dates for the fire season. That does mean though, that when we have these, uh, these more traditional starts, there is a risk that we could see a longer tail to the fire season, and that's something we'll continue to monitor through our nine bushfire management committees around the state who are responsible for monitoring those local conditions, and we'll be working with those committees um, towards the, uh, the traditional end of the fire season to see what conditions are and whether we need to extend the season in any parts. Uh, so we'll be closely monitoring that. There's um, a lot of talk on the East Coast about this La Nina weather event um, that's hitting us. How much of South Australia would be affected by that? And are we here potentially, and on some of the peninsulas, are they going to be affected by that at all, or is it still quite dangerous? La Nina is obviously a, uh, a, a nice weather event to have compared to El Nino, which is much you know, drier and where we traditionally see our worst bushfires across this country. However, La Nina has the bigger impact on the east coast, which is what we're seeing now with those flooding rainfalls again and again up and down the, uh, the east coast of the country. 
In South Australia, it can be a bit hit and miss, and that's, uh, that's a bit hard for us. Um, we could get some good rain out of some of these systems, but we also might, uh, might not. And so being in the centre of the country does put us in that, that sort of hit or miss range, unfortunately. It's something we'll continue to monitor. We'll obviously have our fingers crossed and hope that we could get some rain at, at some opportune times to, to moderate the season as we go, but it's certainly not something we'll be planning on. We'll be ready no matter what happens. It's now time to be clearing gutters the Absolutely. Look, we, we strongly urge people to take those steps to have their own personal plans in place. Download a bushfire survival plan from our website, go through the five minute action plan, prepare your property, clean your gutters, remove your winter wood pile from being up against your house, mow your lawns, put your uh, boundary breaks in around your fences if you've got a bigger property, talk to your neighbours about what your plan is on a, on a high risk day and learn what theirs is. These are some very simple steps that people can take to manage their own risk this fire season. What's the fire danger rating today? I mean, this is probably the whole thing. So today we're seeing a rating of very high in several locations across the state and that is being driven as you've just touched on by that heat. We'll also see some stronger winds uh, at some point today over in the west coast as sort of the next uh, week change moves across the state at the moment. And we, we have embedded meteorologists from the Bureau who work with us uh, daily to make sure we are up to date with the latest weather advice and, and any you know, watch out periods or concerns and we'll continue to work with them throughout the whole fire season. Is there concern at the moment while people are scrambling to get those burn pumps to come back given that they've only got you know, a few hours left and is it important to stress that they have to be completely extinguished by midnight? It is. It is important for people to realise that if they have lit any fires, um, not only today but in preceding weeks, um, that they need to make sure they are fully extinguished before midnight tonight because at that point you, know, you do require permits to, to maintain those fires going forward. We know that fires can smoulder for weeks past the time that people think that they are extinguished and we urge that on any days where it's hot or windy that people check on any of the burns they have been undertaking on their properties because that is a frequent cause of concern for our volunteers. So is there a concern with people scrambling before midnight tonight? It, we would hope that uh, or have encouraged people to have been much better prepared so they're not doing these burns at the last minute. It is obviously, as we've just touched on, one of the warmer days so far. And so today probably wasn't the most ideal uh, day for people to be doing that burning, um, regardless of whether they're burning today or whether they have been doing burning in the weeks before. We urge people to make sure that those fires are extinguished. Where are the problem areas you see over the coming months, particularly you know, large portions of forested areas that haven't been burnt as a lot of fuel? Where do you think there will be um, areas of concern to care? At this point we'll be monitoring the entire state. We, uh, we live in a state where we only need that return of those hot, dry, windy conditions and they can just be one bad day as we've seen in events like Wongari or Pinery where we just have that one hot windy day and, uh, and we can have a significant fire in South Australia. So we'll be keeping a close eye across the whole state because anywhere where we've got this grass fuel growth could be a risk to us. Anywhere where we have you know, timbered vegetation um, and you know, in amongst homes and, uh, and businesses is a risk. So we'll be, be monitoring the entire state throughout the season. What is it like then for you guys, for some of um, staff and the members of the CFS and then also people that live in these sort of bushfire prone areas on days like this? Is it a sleepless night? I mean, if you, as you said, it could happen at any moment. What, what are they thinking? Look, on, on those high risk days where we have our total fire bans in place, where we've, we've you know, warn the community that there is significant risk from fire. They are difficult days for our, our staff and volunteers. Those are days where if we have a fire start, whether it's deliberately, accidentally, whether it's some kind of uh, you know, lightning or things like that, where, where we know that, that those fires will be difficult to control and present a real risk to the community. And so they are difficult days for our volunteers. And the fact that they go and hop on fire trucks in you know, 40 plus degree days whilst wearing all their protective gear going out to situations where they don't know what they're going to face other than it will be dangerous, it's beyond impressive. And anything the public can do to help our volunteers stay safe this season by reducing unwanted fires is something that we, we ask for their help in doing. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. I'll just say to the Minister, any other questions for you? Oh, uh, no, that's cool. Thank you, Minister. But we haven't really heard from the Minister. Oh, right. Thank you so much. Given the effort that your members, your volunteers, go to on these very difficult days, how offensive is it when someone deliberately lights a fire? 
it's it's crushing for our people. You know, they're out there, they are risking their lives. And to have fires then be deliberately lit in some circumstances or be the result of reckless actions of landowners who haven't taken the risk seriously, it is it is crushing for our people because they're out there, they're the ones who have to deal with this. And um, and that is something that, that challenges us each and every day in the fire danger season. Thank you. Um, Assistant Commissioner, how have you identified the, these 88 persons of interest? What is it about them that concerns you? Um, they come to our attention for a variety of, of ways. Um, some are convicted arsonists. Others, uh, we've received information uh, from the community about uh, suspicious behaviour. Um, and, and we do due diligence and uh, will investigate and engage with, with people um, and make up our minds whether they're a genuine person of interest or not. Um, and the, the 88 that uh, we're looking at this year are, are the highest uh, risk persons of interest. So there's likely to be others out there of concern that we don't know about everybody in the community and that's why we rely on the community to give us the information, to, to ring us up and, and help us out. What kind of red flags, what um, suspicious behaviour should the community be looking out for? Oh, it, can, it can be anything. Um, out and about uh, on, on, uh, on, on days of uh, a total fire ban day, um, you'll see people who are just in an area where you wouldn't expect them to be. You, you might see, a, see a, a plume of smoke and a car driving away. Take the registration number, give us a call. Um, it, it just could be groups of people who are in unusual locations. And um, because it's not just deliberate, because it can be reckless behaviour, if somebody's out there lighting a fire in, in the hills or somewhere and you think that that's suspicious or that's dangerous, give us a call. So on that, you can be charged with starting a bushfire regardless of intent? Yes, if you're, rec if you're reckless in your behaviour and it causes a bushfire, that's a very serious offence. Um, this number here, 88 persons of interest, has that changed in years gone by? Um, has that increased from last year, two years, three years ago? What, what, can you talk to it's, these um, Look, the 88 is, is, is relatively consistent across a number of years and, and people uh, get added to the list and others taken off. Um, we, we are very much concentrating on the, on the top end uh, of, of the uh, information that we get as opposed to try and cover absolutely everybody. The 526 no matter fire incidents but only 46 uh, were then deliberately lit and it's just not suspicious. What, what were the other sort of 400 incidents? What, 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 what yeah. constitutes an incident? Uh, this is where you get the bushfires that are, uh, uh, that are caused by people who are negligent or reckless. So it's, it's not a deliberate act, but they may have been using a power tool, uh, an angle grinder, uh, or they, they may have decided that they were going to light a, uh, a small fire um, and it got away from them. So it's, there's, a, there's a whole raft of behaviours, and that's what, what, why Operation Nomad concentrates on that behaviour, because the overwhelming majority are caused by people who just don't think. Sounds like that's more of your concern then than the actual arson. Yeah, absolutely. You know, arson is, is a horrendous um, offence. It carries life imprisonment but it's people who just don't think that cause many of the fires and a small fire gets away in no time. And, and we really do need to, to be um, made aware of people who are doing this. And unfortunately for some people, the only way you can get through to them is issue them a fine. And other people who actually do cause a fire, we, we will arrest them and put before the courts. Um, this, these 88 persons of interest, what sort of behaviour have they exhibited in the past to land them on this? It, look, it's, it's a broad range of behaviours. It, it's from people who are actually convicted arsonists uh, through to people who um, have displayed that they have um, a, a liking for fires, if you like. Um, they, they may dabble in incendiary devices and it's come to our intention. Um, they might be found regularly near the scene of fires. Um, and and we, we'll put a picture together and we'll assess the, the information that we have and we'll make a decision on, on whether um, there's somebody we should be engaging with during the fire danger season. Chuck, are you referring to pyromaniacs then within our community? Is that what you're yeah, there, there, are, there are people who uh, have a fascination with fire and they may not intentionally want to light a bushfire. They're not, not necessarily an arsonist, but their, their predilection for, for playing with matches, if you like, um, leads to the behaviour that causes a fire. Just on the um, emergency preamble, the, the fact the SES is involved, is that... 
second year of it, or is it? Yes, it's the second year. Is that because of numbers with police in COVID it helps sort of? Yes, it is. That's total. Yep. Yeah, SAFOL's commitment to COVID is, it remains significant. We uh, today have over 400 police uh, deployed to COVID operations and um, SES are, are very um, uh, graciously helping us out um, so that we can maintain the numbers because just because there's COVID in, in South Australia doesn't mean there's not going to be a bushfire this year. It's heartbreaking for not just the police, but for everybody who's involved. It doesn't take um, long to destroy somebody's livelihood for a life to be taken, whether it's a member of the community, whether it's a member of the CFS or even the police who are, who are being called out to deal with the fire. Um, I, I have a very low tolerance level for anybody who lights a fire during the, the fire ban season uh, unlawfully and I, I certainly have no tolerance on, on uh, total fire ban days. Um, they, they call them out as a total fire ban day for a reason, and it will be a catastrophic outcome if we have a major fire. And uh, whilst it's not up to the police to try and put the fire out, it's certainly up to us to try and stop it from happening in the first place. I've just got one more quick um, prescribed burning today, control not get as much as you hoped done this year with June or what's the go? Yes, so Prescribed Burning in South Australia is led by the Department of Environment and Water and they've had, uh, because of the way the season has manifested with the, the uh, more milder conditions in the start, they have been able to do a lot of burning. I believe there was a burn done yesterday at Crafers, there's another one this week in another part of the Adelaide Hills. So I know they're looking for every opportunity they can to continue that Prescribed Burn program. Dave, I've just got one for Dave, sorry. Um, Dave, uh, the SES uh, fight storms. Yes. Floods, they're fighting COVID, now they're fighting arsonists. What can't the SES do? Um, <clears throat> SES have always proven to be quite a resilient agency. Um, we have a lot of tools at our disposal, but more importantly, we have some amazing volunteers and personnel who commit their time and energy no different to our CFS volunteers who are on the front line of the fires. So we're extremely proud to be supporting police as well as our fire agencies with something such as Operation Nomad. Good on you. Thank you.